Good morning, Living Hope Church. This weekend is full of celebrations. Tim and I pre-recorded this message because we are actually in Boston for a family celebration. One of our nephews and his new wife were married in a destination wedding in Mexico recently, and there's a, a reception for them this weekend for those who couldn't make that trip to Mexico. The second celebration this weekend is observed by people all across our country, Memorial Day. A longtime friend who happens to also be a veteran used to tease me about how deadly my preaching was. He loved to tell me an old story that he conveniently edited to make his own. Tim, he would say, do you remember that plaque hanging on the wall in the church? Well, the other day, a curious little boy was wandering around the church asking all sorts of questions. He saw a picture of you, and he asked me who you were. And I told him he used to be a minister in this church a long time ago. Then the boy spotted the old plaque. What are all those names up on there? The little boy asked. I told him, they are the names of people in our church who died a long time ago in the service. The little boy's eyes opened wide. Wow, he said. He thought for a moment and then he asked me, which service was it? The early one or the 11 o'clock service? It took me a while, Tim, to collect myself before I could explain to the boy that those people didn't die from the boredom of your sermons. As a matter of fact, I told him, some of the names on that plaque were relatives in his families who had given their lives for our country a long time ago. On this Memorial Day weekend, our country takes time to remember and honor those who have gone before us and gave their lives to pave the way for us. It is a day to acknowledge the ultimate gift that soldiers have given to stand up and fight for what this nation can be. 3,000 years ago, David's best friend, Jonathan, and his father, King Saul, were killed by the Philistines on the slopes of Mount Gilboa. As David mourned, he composed a funeral song for Saul and Jonathan, and he commanded that it be taught to all the people of Judah. It is known as the Song of the Bow, in one of the verses, David laments, Oh, how the mighty heroes have fallen in battle. Jonathan lies dead on the hills. How I weep for you, my brother Jonathan. Those ancient words still speak powerfully to us today. David's laments remind us that war is always personal. It is people. It is not a statistic. It is about people who have died in war. Warriors and civilians, the good and the bad, the young and the old, each person has a name, an identity, a unique personality, and important relationships. My earliest memory of honoring those who have died was with my father, teaching us to respect those who served our country and fell in the line of duty. My father was a Presbyterian minister, and he was very much a part of the community life in Niagara Falls. 
One of his annual responsibilities was to preside at the Memorial Day service held at Military Road Memorial Park Cemetery. As with many other things, there was no questioning that our whole family would attend the ceremony. One year, I made the mistake of asking my father why we had to go to the cemetery and stand through a military service. His answer became known in our family as the Memorial Day Lecture. It went like this. Don't you realize, Tim, that the only reason we are able to worship God freely and live in this beautiful country is because people were willing to serve in our military and even give their lives to defend this great nation. The least we can do is set aside a small amount of time to honor these men and women for their selfless deeds and the sacrifice that they have made for us. Tim, Memorial Day started as a decoration day at the end of the Civil War in 1868. Families would visit the grave sites of loved ones and decorate graves with flowers. In 1882, Decoration Day was changed to Memorial Day. Tim, it has become a time to remember all of our fallen soldiers who gave their lives for this country and for you. You are going. And that is final. I never asked again. In the spring of 1979, six months after my father died, the local legion called and asked if my mother would pray during the Memorial Day service. She agreed, and we went. They paid tribute to my father at the service that year, and in a very humbling way, I began to realize what it means to honor others and acknowledge the impact that they have made on our lives. In a more general, symbolic way, the Memorial Day reminds us to celebrate and honor all people who have made a positive impact in creating the world we live in today, people who have paved the long road we walk on as we move into the future. I have heard friends who are Vietnam veterans talk about the memories and emotions that erupt when they remember and participate in these national holidays. Even though I never served in the military, I was deeply moved to see the Vietnam Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C. Back, back in 1985. It was on Memorial Day weekend. We were standing in front of the two adjoining walls of the shining black granite, each wall 246 feet long and 10 feet high. The reflection of your life was superimposed over the almost 60,000 engraved names of those who had died. A reporter was there broadcasting, interviewing a Vietnam veteran with the wall as a backdrop. The reporter asked the vet why he had traveled from Chicago to D.C. on that Memorial Day. The soldier looked straight into the face of the camera and the reporter. And with tears streaming down his face, he said, because of this man right here, pointing to a name etched in the wall. This man right here gave his life for me. 
He gave his life for me. That explained it all. There was no need to ask any other questions. The interview ended with the camera focused on the man tracing the name of the friend with his finger, with tears rolling down his face as he remembered he gave his life for me. In the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus said in the 12th verse, This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. On this secular holiday, we remember those who have given their lives so that we might live in freedom here on earth. And in remembering their sacrifice, it naturally leads us to also remember the greatest sacrifice ever made and the greatest gift of love ever given. It was given by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus gave his life for you. Jesus gave his life for me. The Son of God left his place of glory to come to earth. The sinless one took on our sin and he died in my place. And he died in your place. And that's the central message of the Christian faith. God so loved the world that he gave his son. People in this world matter so much to God that God allowed his son Jesus to die in our place so that we might have freedom from sin and freedom to live, not just here on earth, but eternally. I'm going to invite you now to take a moment with me as we pray before we go on. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, on this Memorial Day weekend, we take a moment apart from the picnics and parades and festivities to remember soldiers who fought the good fight and laid down their lives in service to our country. We were strangers to them, and yet they showed us the greatest human gift as they offered their lives for us. Heavenly Father, we take a moment today to pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, where so many lives have already been lost on both sides of the war. We plead with you, God, to bring peace to this ravaged country and to bring peace to so many other areas of conflict in the world. Gracious God, we remember once again that you so loved the world that you were willing to sacrifice your son for the whole world, not just this country, so that anyone and all who trust in Jesus may have eternal life. There is no greater love than this. And we thank you, Father, for your indescribable gift in your Son, Jesus Christ. And we pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is also Pentecost. Now, 
the celebration that we're attending here in Boston is really just for the newlyweds, family, and friends. Memorial Day is a celebration for our whole country. But Pentecost is a celebration of the Christian church all across the globe. Pentecost was a holy day long before the birth of the church. It was one of the three great Jewish pilgrim festivals. And every able Jew who lived within a 20-mile range of the city of Jerusalem was bound by Jewish law to travel to Jerusalem to observe these three holy days. Pentecost means the 50th. And the holiday is also called the Festival of Weeks because the Lord commanded Jews to bring offerings to the Lord from the early harvest seven weeks or on the 50th day after Pentecost. So every year, people made the pilgrimage and they crowded into Jerusalem. Josephus was a first century historian and he said that close to two million people would come into Jerusalem for those holidays. That's why the biblical account of Pentecost, there's such a long list of international visitors who had come to the city from all those unpronounceable names. And that's also why I'm going to skip that part of the story where those countries are named. But on that first celebration of Pentecost after the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus, God poured out his Holy Spirit upon Jesus' followers, and the church of Jesus Christ was born. This is the account that's recorded in the second chapter of Acts. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. And when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Continuing in verse 12, they stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the 11 other apostles and he shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So now... Pentecost is one of the three holy days for the Christian church as well. 
We celebrate the birth of our Savior at Christmas. We celebrate the resurrection of our Savior at Easter. And we celebrate the birth of the Church of Jesus Christ at Pentecost. Pentecost, however, is the least known and the least celebrated of these three holy days. Many of you may not have even known or not remembered until you got here this morning that today is Pentecost Sunday. And I doubt that any one of you went out and bought a brand new outfit to wear, especially because today is Pentecost. Your children and your grandchildren didn't wake up early excited to go look for their Pentecost basket or open up their Pentecost stockings stuffed full of goodies. No one asked you, hey, what did you get for Pentecost this year? But God did give us a very, very important gift on Pentecost. He gave us Jesus' promised going away presence, the Holy Spirit. Pentecost is a joyful celebration of transformation. Because of Pentecost, you and I and this church and Christ church all over the world can be transformed from fear and timidity and weakness into strength and boldness and joy. It happened to the early Christians. They were huddled together behind closed doors. They were uncertain because Jesus had left again. They were frightened of the Jewish leaders. They were frightened of the Roman government. They were unsure of what to do next. And then God sent his spirit. And the believers were given power to overcome fear and discouragement. They were given power to preach the gospel and they were given power to lead others to faith. Through the Holy Spirit, believers were also given gifts to be used to build up the body of Christ and to grow the kingdom of God. Gifts of knowledge and prophecy, healing and craftsmanship, preaching and teaching, service and administration. You know, in one sense, Pentecost was a one-time, standalone, never-to-be-repeated event. But in another very real sense, Pentecost is repeated every time the Spirit is poured out on the people of Christ so that they can do ministry and mission. Pentecost happens again every time someone is convicted of their sin and the truth of Jesus and comes to faith. It happens each time the Holy Spirit gives us words or wisdom or insight that's beyond our human understanding. We experience Pentecost again each time the Spirit fills us with courage to open our mouths and speak the good news of the gospel. Pentecost happens as the Spirit gives us comfort when we're grieving or that peace that is promised that is beyond human comprehension when we are struggling or hope when we are discouraged. It's Pentecost again whenever the Holy Spirit gives us the spiritual gifts that we need to partner with God in building up the body of Christ within and building the kingdom of God beyond. So today, we're going to pray for Pentecost to happen again in and through Living Hope Church. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that when you left earth to go and stand at the right hand of your Father. You ask God to give us another advocate to help us and to be with us forever. 
Thank you for sending your spirit of truth to live with us and in us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome in our hearts. Come, Spirit. Come. Pour out your love and your power on Living Hope Church. Let your glory fill this house by your power upon us and within us. Help us to rise up to be your witnesses in a world that hungers to know you. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Even as we pray this, we stand in awe and wonder of who you are and what you do. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.